dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place to wrath. What does it mean? Is it an oxymoron? Somebody hurt you, don't revenge, but give place for wrath. The moment you don't avenge yourself, you have created a space for God to fight. Therefore, if an enemy hunger feed him, if he thirst give him drink, for in so doing, thou shalt what heap up coals of fire on his head. Are you seeing giving place to rot? The moment you avenge, these things can happen. Now listen to this. Your enemies don't go free. But the Bible says, just don't do it yourself. There are things David denied. David first denied Saul's armor. Number two, David declined and denied the opportunity to kill Saul. That thing he declined gave him access to the throne. So David declined things. But there was something David didn't decline. decline. He didn't decline Bathsheba. There are things you must decline. If you are going to be safe. You can't be safe. Even as a pastor, it's not everything they give you, you take. The Bible calls the church the pillar, the ground of truth. If we don't talk about these truths on the ground of truth, we're in trouble. Matthew's Gospel 14, 25 through 31. Matthew 14, 25 through 31. If you found it, please say amen. Let's read. Two, three, go. And straightway, Jesus constrained his disciples to get into the ship and go before him onto the other side. Everybody read. He went up to the mountain to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves. For the wind was contrary, verse 25. And on the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them, walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit. And they cried out for fear. But straightway, Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer, for it is I. Be not afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. And he said, Come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid. And beginning to sing, he cried, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? Let's continue. And when they were coming to the ship, the wind ceased. 33. Then they that were in the ship came and worshipped him, saying, Of a truth, thou art the Son of God. Somebody say amen. amen. Sweet Holy Spirit, you are the greatest teacher of all. And I ask in the name of Jesus that in the few moments that I have here, that you will put grace upon these lips of clay. And I will speak your word with excellency, accuracy, and boldness. There will be revelation, insight that will be applicable to the situations of your people. To the end that the church is established and edified. And Jesus alone is glorified. I declare by faith I'm anointed to teach your people, are anointed to hear. This atmosphere is anointed and conducive for the ministry and the sowing of your word. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Please, you may be seated in the presence of God. So we are continuing in the series, Discipleship. Last week, the Lord began to speak to us about the subject of discipleship from another perspective. And there were things that the Spirit of God said very loudly. Am I audible where you are? All right. There are things... That the Spirit of God began to say very loudly. Alright? And that is the aspect of the Lordship of Jesus Christ. If Jesus is your Lord, there are things you can't say. If Jesus is your Lord, there are things you can't do. Let me not use the word can't. Let me use should. Because you are a free moral agent. But if Jesus is Lord, there are things you should not do. And there are things you should not say. For instance, one of the things that came very clear... From God's word, as we studied along these lines on Sunday morning service, is that you can't say no to a Lord. How many of you remember that? Or should, you, should I use the word? You can't say no to a Lord, but you shouldn't. Is that okay? Is that okay? You shouldn't say no to a Lord. Because, in fact, can we define Lordship? Who is a Lord? When you say Jesus is Lord, what does it mean? Does it mean Jesus is Oga, Oga on the top, at the top, as, he, as we say what comes to your mind when you speak of the Lordship of Jesus Christ? What? He reigns. Yeah. 
He calls the shot. I like, I like that word. He calls the shot. What else? Master of all. So a lord is one who reigns without a rival. That's all you have said. So he's master. So how do you have a lord speak to you and you tell the lord not so? And we examine two apostles in the Bible. I like the Bible. You know I love the Bible? Of course, I love the Bible for many reasons. But one of the reasons I, I love the Bible is that it documents not just the successes of men. It documents even the failures of people in the Bible. That's why the Bible says the things that were written at four time were written for our learning. That we through the patience and comfort of scriptures will find hope. So when we look at the word of God, we see the failures of David and we see the successes of David. We see the failures of Peter, we see his success. We see the failures of Abraham, that Abraham, the father of faith, lied. So the question is, how would a man of faith lie? That also tells you, if you look at scriptures very well, that the fact that you have strong faith would not mean that there wouldn't be times you would have to deal with doubts. Is anybody getting what I'm saying? So when you look at the Bible, the Bible is too real to be ignored. You know, if it were you, when you want to do reality, how many of you know what they call reality shows? We live in the era of reality shows, so we have a few of them, and I'd like you to give me their names. Number one. Keeping up with the Kardashians. Good. Number two. Oh, there's Housewives of Lagos. Not Atlanta. Free Housewives. Real Housewives of Abuja and of Lagos. Praise God. Any other one? Don't lie. Speak up. I know you know them. Is that a reality show? Yeah. Oh. I just, you know, I hate it, so I don't consider it as, I hate it in totality. So, we live in the era of reality shows. What does that mean? Because people really want things that are real. Are you getting what I'm saying? People don't like, you know one of the reasons I love documentary, uh, documentary movies? It's because it's based on things that happen. For instance, how many of you have seen Amina, the Lady King, Amina, in the north? You've not seen it. You've not read along those lines. What do you people do with your subscriptions? I'm just amazed. You have not watched Osama. Obama killed Osama. She is Obama killed. You've not watched any of those ones. <laughs> Praise God. So I like those real things. And you must understand that we are dealing with a generation. The generation Z, actually. They want to know, they want to find the reality of God. So people are tired of stories. And so we are in the era of reality. So people take their private life, come behind the screens. And you see a wife fight with her husband on the screen. And it begins to get gain ratings. Is that correct? But you know what? There's nothing. You know one thing I've observed when I started watching? In fact, there's something I saw now. There's a, there's a reality, reality show for pastors. It's online. I won't mention their name. There are big bishops. I saw him there. I, my, my mouth was open for 15 minutes. 15 minutes. Uh, no, I, don't, I know the name. I'm not mentioning the name. With, with reverence to that grace. Praise God. Even though you know that um, Saul is wrong and you have the sword, you don't kill him. You understand that? So I respect his labor in the kingdom. So I'm, I'm not going to say that. But I was shocked. They were talking about his, because his wife died, talking about his girlfriend, the girlfriend didn't want to propose, the girlfriend wanted him to propose and say he's not ready to propose, and the girlfriend will walk out and they'll settle the matter. And uh, uh, reality show for pastors, as in mega pastors. I think it's the real preachers of LA. You seen that? Ah, Los Angeles. That's sitting in his revival. You didn't hear that. Thank God you didn't hear that. So, it tells you that the world, I'm going somewhere. It tells you that the world is looking for real things. People want to see what he does behind the scene. Real stuff. But there's, you know what? So, as I thought about reality shows and the fact that, for instance, by my temperament, Mr. Pele, can you do a reality show? There's a camera, camera in your hand. Okay, let me, let, me, let me cut to the chase. Let me, let me put it this way. They are going to give you and your wife $2 million each at the end of each season. And they want to put a camera, want to see how you sleep, how you wake up, how you bathe, how you correct your children, how your children fight. At the end of the season, $4 million comes to the home. Would you take it? Think well, I became. You, you are sure? $4 million. You won't take it. You know what? You know I knew that the answer would be no. Because of his person. There are some of you here, you will, you will tell them to give you time to think about it. Pascaline. She's going to do it. You see, I'm correct. I knew he wouldn't do it. I knew she would, she would do it. I may slap the person that offers that to me. 
I like my privacy. So as I was studying along those lines, I observed that from what I heard, though, I don't know if I'm correct, for those of you who are pros, why is pastor talking about reality issues? I'm coming to the Bible. We can close by 10.30 by the grace of God. We can. I discovered that some of them were edited. Huh? Is it true? Then to me it's not real. Are you getting what I'm saying? A generation that is looking for what is real and it is edited. To me it's not real. I know it for you it's real but it's not real. Take me to the bathroom. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Don't cut out anything. Don't cut out the one you don't want us to see. But you know one thing I like about the Bible? No reality show, that's where I'm going with this, comes close to the reality of scripture. Ah! Where you see King David in all of his majesty and glory and accuracy in the things of the spirit and his heartbeat from, for God. In fact, his, his name is Naim, the one that brings the light, the love of the Father. And the one who said, I will not sit in a house that is decked while the house of the Lord is not furnished. He said, I would rather be a doorkeeper. Is that how he said it? In the house of God that dwell in the tents of wickedness. That was David. But the same scripture tells us about David. How he looked at a naked woman bathing. What is as real as that? So you look at the Bible. You see their successes. You see their failures. You can relate with them. I've come to tell Gen Z. There's nothing more real than the Bible. Okay. There's, what's, what's the letter for Z? So there's why. So maybe we have Generation Y here too. Because not all. Generation Z. So whether you fall with generations in the, uh, into Generation C, uh, Z category or Y or A, I want to tell you that the Bible is more real than any reality show. All you need to do is for the book to come alive. And one of the ways the book can come alive is to sit under someone's scent. If there be an interpreter, one with him, one amongst his thousand, who will show man his right? So when you sit under an anointed teacher, one of the things you begin to observe that that book is not a story book, it's a book of life. Is that okay? Do you understand where I'm going to with this? I've not started teaching you. Know? Uh-huh. So the book is real. Now, it's so real that it tells us about the strengths of Peter and the failures of Peter. In fact, the Bible did not hide the fact that Jesus called Peter a devil. He didn't hide it. The same Peter, the same Peter that he told him, ah, flesh and blood. You, I, 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 does that look like um, a schizophrenic situation? Is there anybody following me? You don't understand what I'm saying. It's like you call your wife, you are the sweetest wife during her birthday. You are the sweetest wife. I, if I didn't marry you, I don't know where I would have been. And then in the next two months, you are a witch. I don't know how I met you. Since I married you, my life has dabarut. One person. Flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And upon this rock, Petra, this revelation, I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. The same Peter, I said, get thee behind me, Satan. So I like the Bible because it shows us the strengths, the successes, and the failures of people in the Bible so that we can relate. Amen. Amen. The only reality show that can be real 100% is Genesis to Revelation being acted behind the screen. screen, uh, screen. You understand what I'm saying? Where we have, uh, how many of you have heard this story, um, this IG reel on the apostles of Jesus? My name is Peter. Uh, 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 what? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What is God? Hallelujah. Roll call. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You see, it's not, not real like that. <laughs> My name is Peter. I love the Lord, but if you mess up, <laughs> I can't get the exact words, but I cut ears. You understand what I'm saying? He said that there. So it's real. Now, it shows us the reality of Peter's problem in relating with Jesus as Lord and the ease with which Paul related with Jesus as Lord. Both same apostles, both, first, that's what we call first class apostles. They are first class apostles in the body of Christ. But one struggled to submit to Jesus as Lord. And you saw that graphically on Sunday. How many of you saw that on Sunday? It was a struggle. And I asked the question, which class are you at? Are you in Peter's class? Or are you in Paul's class? Don't ask, answer me physically. After that teaching, you should know your class by now. When God comes to tell you to do things that you don't want to do in the flesh, do you obey? When he tells you to forgive, do you forgive? 
Things like that. Now to my text. So I want you to observe something in verse number 28. Notice that they didn't know it was Jesus who was coming and Jesus was walking. Imagine you, you see that you're about to die, the winds was boisterous, and you're in the sea. One of the places I don't want to be physically is, I mean, I, I don't understand how people want to go on vacation and they want to stay in the island where it's just one house and a sea. How many of you have seen those kind of houses that they have to drop you with a chopper? And uh, I was listening to one celebrity, he said when he goes to that his beach house before a big ocean, he doesn't take his phone. Nothing. I say, if something happens, how do you call people to come out from there? It's a risk. I don't like staying close to water. So notice that Peter was there in the boat and they saw somebody walking. Like, how many of you watched Gazam? You didn't watch Gazam? Generation Z. Give me a hero that you like. How many of you watched Arnold Schwarzenegger? Uh, Terminator. He had a slogan, right? What was that slogan? I'll be back. Oh, my God. So you just see Anno walking. And there's always a soundtrack. You know what I'm saying? And these guys define the danger around. Ah! And they thought it was a spirit. And then Jesus spoke. Jesus, as Lord spoke, he said, it is I. Be not afraid. Then you know the person who will speak up first. You know him? Do you know him? With due respect. The fact that you are loud doesn't mean you are right. So people are very loud. And, and you know, when you are loud and you know how to speak good English, people think you're right. Have you seen people who are ignorant? They have learned big grammar, but they're wrong. Don't get me wrong. Have you observed that Peter was very, very, he was hasty. He was always speaking up. In fact, Peter was the one that called Jesus and asked Jesus, what is in this thing for me, this thing called ministry? What am I going to gain? You know Peter has? Ah, some of them don't know. If we follow you, what are we going to get? Very goka. So Peter looked at Jesus and he said, I know you said you are the one. But if it is you, did you get that? Let me begin to teach from there. If Jesus as Lord comes and he says, Mr. Kunle, it is me. In this situation you are going through in your family. You will want to be sure it's the Lord, right? So did, did Peter do something wrong by saying, if it is you, let me see your hand. Let me see your hand. If you believe Peter did something wrong or he didn't do well by asking if it is you, let me see your hand. If you believe it was in order, let me see your hand. No one. There's a problem. I was digging the foundation. Now I am teaching so that you can understand the text. Be not afraid. I don't believe that's how Jesus spoke. Because his concept of ministry was to connect. Hey guys, you know, we all time say, have you caught any meat? You know what I'm saying? So you come and say, have you caught any meat? You know what I'm saying? Guys, don't be afraid. Emi no right? Huh? I think I did. Emi, Emi no How do you say? Emi no I got it. It's not the contest. Uh, forget the contest. Forget, forget, forget. Sorry. Emini? <laughs> Aha. Uh -huh. All right. Emini. And then Peter saw him. And Peter said, after I said, Emini, Peter said, if it is you, bid me come. I don't think he's wrong. Because there are sometimes you'll find yourself in a situation. You want to be sure it's God. Ah, he proposed. God. This guy gets with mouth. But is this you? A job offer comes that takes you to Egypt with a good salary that will take your family out of poverty. You look at the offer and you say, is this you? So there's nothing wrong with that in following the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Do we agree? Nothing wrong with that. But here's the twist. Peter said, if it is you, bid me come. Put it up there. Put the scripture. Thank you. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be you. How many of you know what thou is? Talk to me, church. Do you know what thou is? If it is you, if it is thou, if it be thou, bid me come. Is that what he said? No, that's not what he said. What did Peter tell Jesus? Lord. So we're talking about relating to him as Lord. What did Peter say? If it is, 
if it's you. Is that what he said? What next did he say? That's not what he said. That's the stronghold of where you have not looked at the Bible for what the Bible says. You'll be quoting it and looking at the Bible and be quoting something wrong. It didn't say, bid me come. It said, bid me come unto thee on the water. That's what he said. The statement was not complete with come. You understand what I'm saying? Are you getting what? Are you seeing this in the Bible? Yes, it's not just software. It's in the hardware too. Check the hardware you see there. Oftentimes, we say, Jesus said, Peter said, and I've done that. If it is you, Lord, bid me come. But that's not what he said. That's not all he said. He said, bid me come to you on the water. Now, this is powerful. First point you need to note this morning. There's nothing wrong with making a request from your Lord. So Peter wanted to come to Jesus. Somebody here wants a baby. All right? Somebody here wants business, breakthrough. Somebody here wants admission. Somebody here wants a spouse. So Peter is making a request of his Lord or from his Lord, and there's nothing wrong with that. I need that to sink in your spirit. The fact that you are a disciple of Jesus Christ doesn't mean you can't make requests. It doesn't mean you can't ask him for things that you need. If it is you, bid me come. So I want to come to thee. I need a house. I need a job. I need a career. I need a business. A new business. I need a new car. I need a new house. I want to build a house of my own. There's nothing wrong with following Jesus and having these things. The same Jesus said, no man who will leave father and mother, lands and houses for the kingdom and follow me. Who won't get it in this life? The same Lord said that. How many of you know Jesus said that? So there's nothing wrong. So for Peter to say, if it is you, be me, come. All right? I want to come to you. There's nothing wrong with that. But the next statement is where the problem is and what a disciple must not do. Now, I'm going to be very careful here so that I don't give you the th thinking or the feeling that what Peter said was wrong. No. But there's a better way. I will see that again. What, when Peter said, bid me come to you on the water, follow me closely, it, it's not wrong, but there was a better way. There's a superior way a disciple relates with his Lord when making a request. Did you get what I said? It is not wrong to make a request. Is that okay? Good. So he said, if it is you, bid me come. I'll just teach in 30 minutes. And the ne next statement is, bid me come to you on the water. You must be very careful in making your request to your Lord. Be very careful not to tell him how you want it. Because he's Lord. I'll explain. When you finish writing, look up. Because I want to ask you something. How many of you have played this scenario in your mind? How many people were in the boat? Sometimes it looks like only Peter was there. Sure, it wasn't only Peter. How many people were in the boat? Minus Peter, how many people? Good. So, um, if Mr. Kunle, let's say Mr. Kunle was Peter, are you done writing? I'll wait for you because I need all of you to look up and uh, let's share this together. Because when you're relating with Jesus as Lord, you must be careful not to tell him how you want it. You must, be, you must be free to tell him what you want, but not how you want it. And that's the problem with many people's faith. They want something, but somehow they're subconscious. And I know what you're saying, be a good Bible student. What about the Roman centurion? He said, speak the word only. I'm coming there. You must be careful when you're relating with your Lord not to tell him how to do it because he's Lord. You can tell the Lord what you want. But you can't tell him how you want it, the time, the factor, the scenario, no. And that's what he did with the case of Lazarus. How many of you know that the sisters of Lazarus wanted him to come immediately? The question is, did he come? Did he come when she wanted? You must understand that when you are running and walking the path of the Lordship of Jesus Christ, you will ask him for things. He will do it the way he knows his best. It's a very critical point in discipleship. You don't tell God, I want to marry, and you tell him how you want to marry. I'm not talking about the ceremony. You can decide to put the ceremony in the moon. That's for you. But how the man will come? You may, you may want to see him at the bus stop. No. You may want to see him at the gym. Because these days, you know, I see a lot of things, you know. Um, not very regular yet because of my schedule last week. And ministry, ministry engagement. I do some exercise every morning, very early. So I discovered something. Don't misunderstand me. That some ladies 
do gym and come to the gym, are you getting what I'm saying? Can I have just one person make me feel I'm saying the truth? I'm a man, so I know, are you getting what I'm saying? In fact, I'm just confessing, that's one of the reasons I've toned down a bit. It's deliberate. I discovered that it was, it's marketing at its peak. Marketing, ah, you know, I don't go to, I've never been to a gym and my club, a club in my life. There's nothing wrong with it. When I was a sinner, I'm not saying a Christian can go to a club. What I'm saying is that, yeah. but a believer can go to a gym, you know that. To share some, well, I discovered it. In fact, one day I went to, <laughs> when I went, I saw them. I said, there's no shedding of weight here. <laughs> no, there's no shedding of weight. I tell you before God, for what I saw, I never knew I would say this publicly. There's no shed. A man in that mist must have, he must be a man of God. I discovered it was marketing at its peak. At its peak. And it works for many of them. So there, so there are some guys, not just the guys jogging, the guys driving, going to work by 6 a.m. So there was a scenario I saw. Is it okay if I keep teaching? You like this one? Uh -huh. So there was a guy I saw. He was driving a very good, you know, proud of recent one. And I was by the left. So I helped myself. I don't stay close. I go the other way. You hear what I'm saying? So I saw that when she saw the car approaching, everything about her changed. And truthfully, the man paused and gave a deep stare. Then nothing happened in the past. But if it happens four more times, numbers will be exchanged. Are you getting what I'm saying? So, if you were Peter, and that whole thing was happening there, and you see Jesus walking on the water, just walking by himself, and he says, if it is you, bid me come. So, now, the reason why I brought that gym is to let you know something. You can decide to enroll in a gym after you have prayed and fasted for two weeks for a man. And your husband and the lordship of Jesus dictates that you won't find him in the gym. But you will prefer him in the gym because one of the things about gym is that, you see, there's a psyche around it that wealthy people go there, even if they are broke. As the people who are okay. Are you getting what I'm saying? People who have a routine. People who are fitness conscious. They are, they are conscious about their health. So you can say, ah, I want somebody who thinks like this. So you are praying to the Lord, Lord, I need a Boaz. I don't know if Boaz can be found there, but I need a Boaz, I need a man, and you're praying to God, and I've told you there's nothing wrong with asking your Lord for things. He's going to give you the husband. But how you and where you will meet your husband is not your business. I want to say that again. Because I've seen people reach, stretch their faith for things, and faith does not work because they gave God a route. No, he's Lord. If there's anything, have you observed that when your wife wants to tamper with your, your manhood, your son, I'm sorry, your masculinity. Is that okay? Are you getting what I'm saying? No, you have to. I thought people understand that, but when I, when I saw people's faces, I have to bring it down. When you are teaching online, there's a way to talk. Hmm. Somehow, the man in you rises. No, on this one. Even when you begin to raise boys, check the way your sons begin to respond to their mother. After a while, I did a study on that line. They feel that a woman shouldn't tell them what to do, even if it's their mother. Allow your sons to grow. So it is the job of the father to put their senses correctly. When you hear them speak in the, to their mother in a particular way. Are you getting what I'm saying? So you must and you cannot tell Jesus how to do it. I've seen people release faith and they've told God. Let me tell you something. It is the zone of God to know how. It is not for man. And when man steps into that, man has stepped into the zone of divinity. How a virgin will conceive without a sperm is not your business. It's God's business. That you want a job. How you get the job is not your business. Somebody, it may just be in a BRT. God just says, don't drive. And you just, you just, how many of you have woken up and you didn't feel like driving? Uh, I'm okay. It's only me and you. You've woken up and you didn't feel like driving and you wanted to take something light. And that's when you meet somebody who gives you your job. How it will happen is, is it's the Lord's decision. So, back to what Peter said. Wow, I wish I had time. Peter said, if it is you, 
bid me come to thee on the water. So, Mr. Kunle, back to what I was saying. If imagine you were Peter, and that thing is happening, and you say, Pastor, if you are the one, you can't see my face. If you are the one, tell me to come, or just wave, or just touch your nose the way you touch your nose when you teach. Are you getting what I'm saying? Just to know. Praise God. You think I don't know? <laughs> I know. Every preacher has his habit. Praise God. So, rest in peace, great man of God, stayed under him for a while in ministry when he prays. That's how he prays. Fiery man of God. He always did his job like this. We didn't know till he went home to be with the Lord. Nobody had the bonus to ask him why. But he was a righteous man of God. So, bear with me. Mine is this. Is that okay? Because a priest must perceive. You can live by the word. Are you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, Pastor, if it is you, do something. Let me know you are the one. I can't see your face well. Then Mr. Kunde says, if it's you, bid me come. That statement, if Peter had stopped at come, beautiful. Because if Jesus says come, I want to ask you a question. If Jesus had told Peter, come, and Peter Peter attempted to fly, to go up. Would he have gone up? Think well. Are you sure? If, if as the thing was going like this, he said, Lord, if you are the one, bid me come. And I know if you release the prophetic word, once I attempt to come, because you said to come, I will come. No, there's no church, you're not getting me this one. Peter just, I know he doesn't have wings. That's what you're saying. But could, could he walk on water as a human being? So if he attempted to walk on water and he did for a while, if he attempted to, to go there by doing like Superman, would the, would, the, would the instruction of Jesus have aided him to come? That's what I'm letting you, trying to let you know. That when Jesus says come, there are many options. Are you getting what I'm saying? Let me give you another option that will interest you. Let me give you another option. They were all in the boat. Remember 11 were there. Lord, if it's you, tell me to come. I hear your voice, but if it's you, tell me to come. And Jesus said, come. You know, it also means that he could have gotten back into the boat. And it means that they would sail safely to him. Oh, God. Is there a church here this morning? You get what I'm saying? There were many options. But he narrowed it down to a preferred system that was kind of selfish. You know what I mean by selfish? So you know it's the only one that went first. What about the 11? Now don't misunderstand me. I'm not saying it is wrong. But what if he flew? What if you went back on the boat? So you must be very careful. Now, this is, this is where that statement or that move or giving Jesus an option was dangerous because he, was, he wasn't prepared for the option. Ah, I wish there was a choice. I wish you had time this morning. Let's do some digging. If you tell Jesus, this is the way I want it, you may not be prepared because as soon as he began to walk, he showed that he was not prepared. He sank. But if you allow the Lord to do it the way he wants to do it, he will do it in a way that you have been prepared for. Are you hearing what I'm saying? He will do it in a way you have been prepared for. I want a husband, not in the gym. You will even see him in Eko. I know we want a co boy. And all of a sudden you go to supply something or your company sends you to Kaduna. And you meet this boy and you're wondering, I'm sure you're not from around here. You fine looking thing. Praise God. You fine, fine. <laughs> Speaks well, smells well. Ah! He said, are you from here? He said, no, no, I just came in from Lagos to do something. And you're, in your mind, you're like, I talk up. And then you found your Boaz from Lagos, but you didn't see him in Lagos. You have to take a trip to Kaduna because Jesus is Lord. Yeah. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I'm very careful with my prayer. The human nature will want to tell God how to do it. Sure, you know, we have that tendency. This is, how many of you know you have your preferred way? You want, um, 
There's a way you want to blow. Sure you know. If you want to, there's a way God, I want to, all of a sudden, my decision will just go viral on IG. People will begin to call me. And it won't happen on IG. You'll just be on the streets. Just doing something simple. And the Lordship of Jesus comes in and says, this is the moment. Ah! I wish, I wish, I wish I could teach this thing this morning. Never tamper with his Lordship. When he wants, if God tells you, come, don't ask him, don't say, on the water. If the Lord says, you are going to marry this year, don't even ask him how. The truth of the matter is that it's a dangerous question to ask. Because your mind can't fathom it. That's why when God tells somebody you're going to get married in the next six months, they can't believe it. You know why? They are thinking of the how. So Peter said, if it is you, bid me come to me on the water. And he was not prepared for the water. You know, sometimes you feel you want something the way you want it and you think you are prepared for it. But God is the one who knows if you are prepared or not. So that's a great lesson. Now, as I begin to close, I want to show you where Peter got it right. You see, this is the greatest reality show. It will show you the mistakes and the successes of people. But how many of you got that point here that It is not a pastor coining things. Are you seeing it in the Bible? That he told Jesus how he wanted to come and he wasn't prepared for it. But the Lordship of Jesus will get it to you how he wants to get it to you in the best way he wants to get it. Now, can I answer the question of um, the Roman centurion? It's important for good Bible scholars because they may look at this teaching and say, but the Roman centurion said, don't come. Speak the word only. I'm a servant with me, no. A good point to preach. And Jesus looked at him and said, I've not found this kind of faith. No, not in Israel. And the keyboard begins to play. He said, whenever you tell the Lord how you want it, he's going to do it right for you. It's not true. It's not true. Um, somebody's taking me back 15 years ago. Now, listen, listen to this. 15, 20 years ago, or maybe 20 some years ago. That's how we used to preach. You won't believe it. <laughs> and keep on making us word. <laughs> My friend, teach. I got up and say something that people can use for their life. <laughs> but there's nothing wrong with preachers because to some, he gave that grace. Now, I want to ask a very important question that will explain this Roman centurion matter. If you have noticed, if you, have, if you are not in church but you have a relationship with Jesus, not just in church, you must be in church, okay? And you have a relationship with Jesus and you are genuinely born again here and you asked God for something when you were born again in a particular way you want it and he didn't raise your hand. Think well. That time it was fresh. You got born again. You asked God for something in a particular way. You say, if you do this for me, you do it like this. Lord, I will thank you. And he did it when you just met Jesus. Raise your hand. Did you get the question? Did you get the question? I'll say it again and I'll give you the answer from my experience. You just came to the Lord. You are new. And you made a request that was even great. And you said it in a casual, innocent way, in the way you wanted it. And you saw it happen. Let me see your hand. One. It happened to me. I have observed. Go and observe. When somebody comes to the Lord fresh and new, I'll prove it in scripture, and he begins to make some certain requests. At that point where he's just new in Christ, he's just meeting Jesus, Jesus will begin to grant him things. But the moment he matures, he steps into the zone that it is not as I will. God will not do that to a baby Christian because the baby Christian will be discouraged. No, he won't. But when you step into maturity, spiritual maturity, he will tell you like Paul, I hear your prayer, but I know good one. This is what I'll do. I'll give you grace. If you tell that to a newborn babe, there's no encouragement on the road. The Roman centurion just met Jesus. It's okay. Jesus could not treat the Roman centurion as he was treating Peter and Paul. Number two, the Roman centurion was not a disciple. Do you know he wasn't a disciple? No, he wasn't a disciple. He was a big man who who understood authority and used his authority to get what he wanted. But I studied in my Bible that people who are disciples and follow Jesus, I told you on Sunday, it looks like he carves out a tough path for them to follow. He carves out a path for them to follow. He will not reduce the process for them. 
Let's read this as, as we close. Did you get anything this morning? Let me bring the word home before I give you this last point. Stop telling God how you want it to be done. Just tell him what you want. That's why I'm very careful about sex of a baby. I've had people come to me all kinds. Lord, Pastor, I want you to pray that this one will turn. They have conceived them. That it will turn from boy to girl. Am I saying that you cannot ask for a particular sex? You can. But be specific in prayer. When you ask God for a child, it's different from asking God for a boy. A boy child. Share your understand. Do you know the difference? Lord, we need a child. He can give you a girl. But when you say, Lord, I need a boy, you have told him specifically what to do. And that is not wrong. However, if he's strong, if his lordship is strong in your life, and he needs to raise the first female Nigerian president from your womb. Did you hear what I said? You will have to come to Gethsemane. Where you say, it's not as I will. But as you will. So look at this. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come to thee on the water. And Jesus said, come. And he followed the route he dictated. And he wasn't prepared for it. He began to sing. Next verse, as I close. And he said, come. And when Peter was come, watch this one. Everybody, look up, look up, look up. When Jesus, when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on water to go to Jesus. Next verse. Next verse. Next verse. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he said he was afraid and began to sing. He cried saying, Lord, Peter changed now. Save me. But he didn't give Jesus the way to save him. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Bid me come to thee on the water. I want to walk on water. Jesus said, come. He wasn't prepared. He sang. But when danger came, have you been in the situation where you tell me, Lord, do it. I don't care how you do it, but get it done. That's when Jehovah was stepping. See, just the way your husband likes to be a man, God likes to be God. When your husband says, he wants to be the man, God wants to be God. Let me tell you something I've been afraid to tell this generation. God likes to show off. Read your Bible. In, his own, in the life of his own personal, if he's not show off, why did he go to boast about Job? He likes to show off in your life. This, forget it. When everybody said, there's nothing, apart from the timing of the Father, there's nothing you can tell me that made Jesus stay back a few more days when Lazarus died, that show off. You think you're the only one that likes effect? So he stayed back two more days. And he went about his business. He was doing ministry. He have said, ah. He said, this guy is gone. He said, now nah, let's go and wake him up. And when he got there, everybody had given up. He said, he's, he's decomposing. The guy walked into the place. And he went far. Not that he went inside. He went far. He said, Father, he lifted up his voice. He lifted up his voice. Thank you, because you hear me always when I pray. Roll the stone away. Ah, uh ah. -uh. See the Ephesia, like after rolling the stone. Lazarus come for. When Lazarus came, he looked at somebody close to him and said, now lose him. Let him go. That, there's no effect sweeter than that because he's Lord. A Lord cannot fit into your timetable to come the day Lazarus died. A Lord can come seven days later because he's Lord. Ah! I'm telling you, the Lordship of Jesus is powerful. It's not this one just like, Jesus is Lord. If Jesus is Lord, it is huge. If his Lordship shows in your life, okay, all your will, you will surrender it. That's what happened to Abraham and Isaac. It was the Lordship. Give me your son. The son I waited for 25 years. You are Lord. I'll be teaching on Isaac of Mount Moriah tomorrow. You don't want to miss it. Powerful stuff. Now watch this. And when he saw the wind boisterous, I promise you I'm closing because I want us to close. I told my wife we're going to close at 10.30. Praise God. Is it 10.30? 10.30 now, right? Talk now. You want me to go on? Is it 10.30 now? Two more minutes. Good. Can we read together two, three, go, everybody? But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried, saying, Lord, save me. Did he tell him how to save him? Now watch this. When Peter told Jesus how he wanted to come to him, he sank. When he allowed God to save him the way he wanted to save him, it was perfect and flawless. 
So how did Jesus save him? Stretch forth his hand. Do you know Jesus could have saved him in many ways? Let me give you one of the ways Jesus could have saved him. Some of you don't believe. You think he's only movies they do it. Jesus could have done like this. The guy would disappear behind him. Oh. Some of you don't know the Lord had that capacity. You don't know Jesus can do like this, he would have disappeared. Huh? Okay, you don't know that Jesus disappeared out of crowds in the Bible? They want, wanted to waylay him. He decided that day to disappear. Pew! What I mean disappear? He didn't run. He disappeared. So if the person that could disappear, you mean he cannot disappear somebody? Ah, he's going to disappear the guy well. Peter will just go from the midst of the ship. Boom! In fact, he can do it in such a way that Peter will be on his bed. Aye. Thank God that was not Jesus. Because I've done some things. Peter will just, just find himself in the bed. Then from where he is, from where I am, I was speaking to his subconscious spirit. It is I. <laughs> oh, God. Amen. So here's a lesson. Stop telling God when you're working with him as Lord. Tell him what you want, but don't tell him how to do it. Because he knows how best to do it. And please, I'm not saying ladies who go to the gym, go to look for husbands. Did you get how I meant? There are a few persons. Please, if you go to the gym, go to the gym. If you're here and your wife goes to the gym, please don't stop it on my account. Even though I believe you should be there. You should be there. Do you agree? It's okay. I heard a great man of God who has a marriage ministry. He said somebody was striking his wife. He was shocked. The man preaches on social media. I don't know if you know him. Very popular. He said he was, just, he was just, the wife was somewhere, standing somewhere. And the man pulled up in a Mercedes. Crazy reset, not a... You know Mercedes, Mercedes. There's Mercedes, there's Mercedes, and there's Mercedes. You know what I'm saying? He pulled up, and she was wearing a ring, and the guy began to woo her. I said, no, 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 I'm married. She was like, no, nah, I'm going to take care of you. That's how crazy people are in this world. <laughs> and when he saw it coming, he just, he just parked his car, came down. It was when the guy saw him that he left. Amen. So he said, God told him, your wife is beautiful. Better take care of her and respect her. You hear what I'm saying? Amen. I'm not threatening any man here. And every woman should have sense. Don't take this message and go home and tell you. Like, you see what Pastor said? You understand know what I'm saying? Make sure you behave well. You are not, you are not of those people. Are you hear what I'm saying? And by the way, if a man is wooing you as a married woman, it's not a testimony. Is that okay? We have to balance things. It's not a testimony. You are taking. Are you hear what I'm saying? You are taking. Praise God. Did you get something this morning? I know you want something for Jesus, but as your Lord, let him do it the way he wants to do it. Let him give you the next child the way he wants to give it. Let him give you the timing he wants to give it. Do you know timing, timing for children matters? You know it matters? The person that trained Archbishop Benson in the house in Bible school, God only say, had all the chance for Christ Bible Institute. After they had a child, they couldn't have again. They prayed and prayed and prayed. And when they had left the matter, Jehovah came. Some of you have not worked with the Lord. Where the Lord will come and say, now nah, I want you and your wife to have a baby. But he can't say that to me because, you understand know what I'm saying? He has already given me a... <laughs> You don't know why I always do this. I can exempt myself from the equation. <laughs> he can come. And guess what? He said, I want to bring the next rector of that Bible school. But I'm looking for a womb. And at a time when they had forgotten, a child came. So even the spacing of your children can be him. I know you want to do the two, two years. But I said the next one, I want it to be four. Because he has seen into the future. Abby, I'm not prophesying to you. No, has no idea. The way she's laughing, has no idea. I'm just teaching. Praise God. Oh, we wanted it two, two. The first one was two. The second one was three, right? Ruel and Penny. We tried. I wanted it because for us, in my house, it's two, two, two. Two, 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 four. So I like that two-year gap. You understand what I'm saying? They are not two apart. You finish paying school fees quickly. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> but we, with all we did, he told me he's Lord. And you know what I'm saying? And um, the second one was three. That, the next one was two between them. Yeah? Yes. Between Royal and the twins. Penny and the twins. It's three. You see that? So even though I wanted two, 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 God made it two, three. Because it's Lord. 
in the future we may know why that spacing happened. I don't know who I'm speaking to prophetically. Eh? Allow God space it. Eh? And the spacing can be, no, I don't want it the next year. God is not wicked. The, the spacing can be two years. It can be one year, six months. Allow him to do that because it's Lord. Is that okay? You will choose your wedding venue, but he will choose how you and your husband will meet. You and your wife will meet. He will choose it. God is going to, the Bible says, God will give you the land. Give us the land that the Lord our God shall choose. God as Lord will be choosing spouses for people. Nobody said amen because they want to choose. The will is strong. This one I want to say is very sensitive, but I won't say it. Sensitive. Should I say it? Yes, sir. It's strong. It may not be for social media. There are times where the person you want to marry is not his choice. It happens a lot. In fact, there are many victims. The reason for many people's marriage problem today is because he was not the spouse that the Lord chose. You look at the guy finish, you say, ah, I don't want this one. But somehow in the place of prayer, Jehovah comes as Lord and says, that is him. Now, five years down the line, you discover that he's, some, he's what you wanted. He has become what you want. And the person... I don't know if you remember that illustration I gave. Two men here. One was up. I put a lady beside them. One came down. Should we do it again? Do you remember it? You remember it? Yeah, Pascal, I come. No, you're married. Is there a single woman here? You are singing. You are come. Give her a hand. But the problem is I can't use married brothers. Bright, come. No, he's already engaged. Share your engaged. I don't cause problem in ministry. Come, catch it. I have to do black and yellow, black and yellow. Come. come. So I'll give you, come. 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 Yes, so she was, she's here. The two of you come. What's the problem? Come. Are you afraid? It's not prophecy. Come, come. So she's asking God. I'm assuming she's asking God for a husband. Go up. You go up. Go. So, in counseling over the years, many sisters are here. She'll prefer this guy. Seven-digit salary. Seven hundred k per month. Will, that, will, will a lady like that in these days help me? 700k salary. Net or gross? Huh? Net. 700k. Plus, plus housing allowance. Huh? Minus housing allowance. So I was listening to Apostle Rumi, uh, uh, an excerpt. He said that his salary, he was an oil worker, you know that. His salary was 1. Point something million per month. His housing allowance was 15 million. When he left it to go into ministry. And then he married a professor's daughter. And, when, and the part in town he chose to leave, where God told him to leave, so that he can be using his money to fund ministry at that point. When it rains, water will enter the house. But his salary per month was either one, one, or one, two. Housing allowance 50 million. I'm sure he didn't have time to mention other, other allowances in the oil sector that they give. They'll give you allowances. I'm sure they'll pay at least the tuition of two of your children. And then he took a professor's daughter inside. And he said his salary did not show on his wife's wardrobe for years. Because they were pumping it into Remnant Christian Network. But if you met him before he left for ministry, wouldn't you prefer him? 1.1. 50 million houses in the world. Which house are you living in that will be 50 million in a year? Even if you decide to live in Lekin, what's worse, two bedroom flat somewhere, 3 a.m. Right? You don't have us, you are going to pay a rent of 8 million. No. You look for the one of the game and do something with the rest. So let's assume that this expansion I gave of this apostle, this is where he is now. I mean, every lady, who, who knows like better things? If you like good things, let me see your hand. I mean, I, I was teaching on Sunday, I was asking daughters in this house, how many of you love soft life? Everybody. 
Even my wife says she wants soft life. She likes soft life. It doesn't mean you won't go through things, but this is what we want. But you are not coming down in Jesus' name. Amen. But physically, some of these men that she's seen, they're coming down. She will meet this one. He doesn't have 70 uh, salary. Maybe his salary is uh, 200. One thing. <laughs> what did he say? <laughs> or too far. <laughs> no, no salary can be too far. That's wicked. So let's say 120, 150, or 200. Oh, he's a big boy. Yeah. Okay, please. Yeah. I'm on the faith link. Oh, yeah, help me. Which, which one is real? There are people who earn 70k a salary. So let's say he has 50k. Okay, let's say he has 50k as a salary. No housing allowance. The 50k is from the housing allowance. And then he comes to propose to the sister. Please, what I'm teaching is not prophetic. Is that, are you understand? And then he looks at this one. When he comes to meet her, the car he pulls up. One, one girl told me when he opened the door, the AC <laughs> ah, I bet think so. <laughs> That when you look at the guy and say, Jesus, you have to be Lord over this girl because the way I'm looking at this guy, she's gone. She will hear you again. <laughs> so when you open the door, the way the woo that came out, ah, sure you know that woo is the answer to the proposal. Is yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to hear God the other AC. I mean, <laughs> and then this guy comes to the car with a good AC, and this guy doesn't have AC. But he loves God. He has vision. He has a good working ethic. And in her prayer time, the first time she prayed, she heard Jehovah call this man's name. Have you been praying before? He speaks and you are crying. Say, God, don't, don't do me this thing. I want John. I'm not using your real name. But God says it's going to be James. And then in her tears, like Jesus in Gethsemane, she accepts James. A few years down the line, James go up, John come down. Oh yeah, James go up, John come down. James is here. Then she now discovered that the person she did not want has become a desire. Then that's when you now understand that Jesus, God is really the ancient of the days. He's the one that sees ahead. You will always benefit from the Lordship of Jesus Christ every time. Are you getting what I'm saying? I tell ladies, salary is not the reason to marry you. It's a very, it's an insultful reason on your destiny and your person because salary can change. A man can earn 150 today and he's a big boy. Like people say 150 is big, 200 is big. And tomorrow, he's looking for 25,000. And somebody who is earning 40,000, tomorrow, just jumps over and you are hearing that uh, 4M is his total package every month, including housing allowance. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The Lordship of Jesus. Now, none of these men is coming down. Yeah, go back, go back up, go up, go up, go up. Go up. Uh, are you hearing what I'm saying? These two people are up in life. Amen. But if this lady is going to marry well, I'm using that as a point of contact to every single lady. In this generation that we live in, she must submit to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. She's going to have a preference. If you ask her now, I'm sure it's TDH. Everybody wants TDH. Tall, dark, and handsome. All right? I'm not saying she's not going to love her man, but the truth of the matter is that he may not be, he may be tall, dark, but not handsome yet. Are you getting it? It's just a logical, word, but he's going to be handsome. Oh, I've told you people, there's nobody that's ugly. Let money come. You don't believe it, just have money. Just relax. Be arguing with me until the ladders come. You will know that you're fine. I tell you, there's only one person I know that escaped. Listen. Only one man escaped that question in my life that I know. Everybody that had money became fine. Except that man. Are you getting what I'm saying? And I don't know if I'm speaking prophetically now. But, and not just to her, but to every single. Sometimes. I told you of the person that was working with Pastor Bimbo Dukoya. There's a guy she wanted. He was in part four. But she prayed and said, Jesus, Jesus. Which one? Because Pastor Bimbo had taught them to submit it to the Lord. So she decided to take, she went on a date with the guy. I've told you that story before. 400 level. And somebody hit his car. The guy came out of the car, rode his sleep. She didn't come out. Have you been in shock that you had to sit where you were? She was looking at him. And you know, as she was looking at him, you are just, you're inside the car, looking through the windshield. 
And all you are saying is, thank you, faithful father. Thank you, faithful father. Because he has shown you that you are going to be boxed. He couldn't handle his temper. He couldn't manage his temper. Immediately she knew that the 200 level guy is her husband. That's the lordship of Jesus Christ. And I'm praying for every sister under the sound of my voice. I'm still having my meeting with you. I know I promised for a year. I'm waiting for the right time. Every single sister online and on ground from today. You will hear his voice when it comes to the marriage partner. Amen. And not only will you hear, the grace to obey Amen. in the name of Jesus. And I promise you as you walk with the Lord, you observe that his commandments are not grievous. Stand to your feet. Give God a hand clap. Thank you guys. Come, come. Come. You come. Come. So, it's not only women. So, they are men too. I don't know why I'm calling you. Come, so I can balance. Come. There are men too that want a part. Men, don't say amen. But there's a shape you want. Is that okay? Is that okay? There's a color you want. Some go for a color. Thank you for being sincere. And I trust you marry the shape you want. That's right. Give him a hand. He married the shape you want. Every man has a shape. Don't let them lie. Some want it slender. So that by the time she has dropped four children. I've heard men say that. I want when she has dropped, her tummy is not body's flat. Then we can start, we'll just go out in our Ferrari, just me and her, and she's too sure wherever she goes. Some men will look at that one, they say they don't want that one, they want press down, shaking together, running over. But when Jesus, when Jesus comes, when the Lordship of Jesus comes, he, watch this, hear me, every man, he will point at a lady that you may not like at that moment physically. She's slender. Maybe. But guess what? Four years down the line. Have you seen it happen with women? Yeah, 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 yeah. See the question. Four years down the line, you wake up in the morning, you were like, good God. She is that thing. Then the person you wanted to go for that had that shape now becomes obese. Am I looking for trouble this morning? That person is now pressed down, shaking together. He's running over everywhere. And then you are saying thank you, Jesus, in your room. People don't know why you're saying thank you, Jesus, because you couldn't have been able to put out, put up with what your preference had become. Are you getting what I'm saying? The Lordship of Jesus doesn't cheat any of us. Even in ministry, every pastor, if you follow the Lordship of Jesus Christ, you will arrive there. I heard the testimony as I close of William Kumi. Have you heard it? Yesterday, he said, in the days where wealth, money was money, there was a very wealthy man in this nation that gave deeper life, IBM computer, typewriter. How many of you know IBM? That's the apple. That was the mark of those days. We saw one. We had one. My father had one. So I know when you had IBM, they, my father locked the places. He put it in a place that had two doors. <laughs> nobody. IBM. Nobody. So deep life had to start typing their outline. Bible study outline. And then the man that gave that thing chased his wife away because of wealth and married another woman. And became a rogue and kumui head. He told the secretary, now, the box is there. Put that typewriter inside the box now. No more Bible study outlines. And the man came and said, why are you not using it again? He said, the man said something, but when I was okay when I gave it to you. So my, my servant said, so you know you're not okay. He said, but I was married to my wife. I was okay when I sold it as a seed. He said, the, the, uh, the Baba Kumi said, eh, but that's not how I look at it. The Bible says, Kumi quoted the scripture to him that he that endures to the end. It is to the end, this Christian race. So he dropped it. Deeper life, no IBM. It's like going from a car to trekking. He said, and all of a sudden, IBMs filled every headquarters of deeper life in, in Nigeria. He said, today we have computers we don't know what. Are you getting what I'm saying? So this is it. He let go of something that he could have kept out of compromise to obey the instructions of scripture. And ladies and gentlemen, maybe if he had kept those, that IBM typewriter, maybe you won't have deeper life today. So I'm letting you know that the Lord of, the of Jesus will always pay you. It may be painful now, but it will always pay you. If somebody gets something this morning, give God praise. Thank you. Put your hands together for them. Give God praise. When I say give God praise, give God, open your mouth. Because some of you under the sound of my voice, he has come to you as Lord and he has made a demand, but you don't like it. Some of you, he has come to you as Lord and he has given you a direction, but you don't like it. Ah! 
when it comes to you as Lord, he will tell you sometimes to take what is precious and give it out. Lift your voice and ask God for the grace. Because every time you submit to Jesus as Lord, he will, you will be the better for it. You will increase. You will prosper. You will enjoy security. Lift your voice. You are not an ordinary person. Yes, your colleagues in school chose their spouses, chose where they wanted to relocate to. They are not disciples. You are a born servant of Jesus Christ. And Jesus owns you, so he dictates your part. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Somebody lift your voice and take the grace to follow the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Not just the person of Jesus Christ. Not just responding to him as Lord, but as Savior. It is in his Lordship that we go further. It's in his Lordship that we go deeper. It's in his Lordship that we get blessed. It's in his Lordship that we enjoy security. I declare it over the sound, under the sound of my voice for everyone under the sound of my voice right here. You will enjoy the Lordship of Jesus Christ. The grace to respond to his Lordship comes upon your spirit today. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Jesus' holy name. Amen. So a woman and a man sits down. They are now aged. And they want their children to marry from their tribe. Not just their tribe, their village. So let's say the person is Igbo. And the Yoruba, the Igbo daughter brings a Yoruba boy. And they sit down. And they are born again. And they hear from the father. As the boy walks in, before the boy says anything, the father hears in his spirit. That is your son-in-law. And then where are you from? He says, I'm from Eko. But Jehovah has spoken. Some of you will get there. All of you. You have to you get there. That's when you will submit to the Lordship. You have the choice to either submit to the Lordship of Jesus Christ or not. Then you see yourself putting your will aside. I would have preferred my, son, my daughter to marry somebody that speaks my language. But you are the will of God. And until we get there in Christianity, Christianity won't be solid. The problem with us is that we don't submit to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. And I'm trusting God. I told you that's how Paul entered, Peter entered racism. Sure, you know that? In ministry. Because he was slow in responding to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. If God had allowed Paul to marry, you know Paul, and God told Paul to go and marry from Egypt, you know Paul would have gone. Paul didn't have an issue submitting to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. And I pray over you. As you leave this house, some of you at this church are going to see this message appear in your life. You'll be shocked. Some of you will be face to face with a decision where God will tell you to take an unpopular route. But I pray that you won't fail. Amen. I say I pray you won't fail. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Father, for your word. You brought it. I believe God as you brought it. I ask that you have defined this truth. In Jesus' holy name. Sing, O barren, thou that didst not bear, break forth into singing, cry aloud, and thou that didst not what travail with child. For more are the children of what the desolate than the children of the married wife. Now, this text deals with two prophetic pictures, and they are women. There are two women here. There's a desolate woman, and there's the married woman. So, in this prophetic picture, the married woman had children. She had products. She had results. All right, some of you sit down and you look at some other people who are like who are believers or probably unbelievers and they have more results than you. David had that situation. He looked at some people, they were prospering more than him. You thought David was the wealthiest. But when he went into the temple of the Lord, the Bible says he went to inquire and God showed him how they will end. When he saw the end, he said, I'm better off. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So when you look at people's life, you observe something about them. That looks like some people are succeeding, they're having more results. And they're having things, they're having results. And you look at yourself, watch this, and there's no result. So scripture comes to give us the diagnosis. The problem, scripture says, is that the woman that doesn't have results, the woman that doesn't have children, the reason she doesn't have children is not really because, you know, she can't produce. I'll show you what it meant. This woman potentially has the capacity to produce more children. This one that is married is producing. You think she's all that because this woman has not had her husband yet. Let's read verse 5 together. Two, three, go. It says, for thy maker is thy husband. Now, before he said this, he says, more shall be the children of the what? Desolate. So the woman that doesn't have a husband right now, who doesn't have children, is going to have children. All she needs is to come under the ministry of a husband. And you get to where I'm going with, with this. All she needs is that, you see, she looks like she doesn't have anything. That woman, potentially she was fertile, but she didn't have a husband, so it didn't show. 
How does this relate to you? As a Christian, until you come under the husbandry and the lordship of Jesus Christ, your fruits will show. It will look like people have more results than you. It's just because you have not come under the ministry of the lordship of Jesus Christ. He's the one that will plant the seed in your womb. He's the one that will nurture the seed in your womb. He's the one that will take care of you until you come to full term and be delivered of your child. So scripture is telling us here that that woman that has children, she doesn't have much more. It's just that she has thy husband. She has a husband. So verse 5, he says, for thy maker is thy husband. So God will get to the point where he becomes your husband. He becomes your Lord. He becomes your caregiver. He becomes your Lord giver. He's the one that now shows you what to do and how to do it. Then your results will begin to show and you observe that you had more potential than the people who had results. The difference was who was Lord over them. The difference is who they submitted to.